So welcome back. Thank you for joining us for this session on managing the pain. We're going to look in this video tutorial at pain management programs. Specifically, what is it? Who's involved? How long, long does it last? And can patients do things outside of their pain management program? So we're here joined by Dr. Dermot McCoy, specialist pain medicine physician. So welcome back, Dr. McCoy. Let me ask you, what is a pain management program? So when the first multidisciplinary pain management unit was set up in Washington by John Bonica in the 19, early 1970s, he realized that uh, tackling pain just from a medical perspective was underdoing the project. And he gathered around him physiotherapists and psychologists, occupational therapists and social workers and various other therapists and to come up with attacking the pain from each of those elements. Later on, in a joint project between Sydney and St. Thomas's Lo Hospital in London, uh, a program was put together, which was three weeks in duration. And that is important. Just like a drug needs to have a dose and a frequency and possibly needs to be repeated, a pain management program has a dose and a frequency and an intensity. Cognitive behavioral therapy. Cognitive means to know about something. Behavioral is to change the behavior, behavior around an event or experience. And putting these together and repeating exercises, developing strategies, and changing the way patients think about their pain using other elements to manage their pain has been shown to be quite effective for the management, particularly of persistent pain. It is not a panacea. It is not available or suitable for everyone, but it is suitable for a vast majority of patients. Now the cognitive behavioral therapy can be delivered as a one-to-one -one or ideally as a group therapy. The system that they, that was originally designed as a three week program had a minimum of eight and up to 16 candidates or 16 participants. And this was found to be quite useful. So CBT is one way of developing and delivering a pain management program. It is a program for the patients to develop strategies to manage their pain. And this might be in tandem with medication or neuromodulation or other therapies, but it it remains as part of the armamentarium and one that needs to be revisited. One-to-one -one therapy might be required in advance of a pain management program or indeed afterwards. It doesn't mean that other therapies cannot be used, but it would be ideal if the, the patients were not cognitively impaired going into a program. So the original iteration was that all medication would be decreased while they participated in the program. Nowadays, we, are, we have found that this is not absolutely necessary. And indeed, sometimes it wouldn't even be desirable. Other therapies along this line that can be used are dialectic behavioral therapy, which is a specialized psychotherapeutic intervention or mindfulness therapy. This has been used and has gained increasing interest over the last 10 or 15 years. It's an ancient technique, probably goes back to the mists of time and certainly Buddhist, Hindu and Sikh um, religions have used what we call now mindfulness. But it is one that is very useful in depression, anxiety and in pain. It is one that can be used in isolation or in tandem with a pain management program. So there are very concrete strategies learned on the management program of uh, exercises, stretches, um, of understanding the biology, biology of pain, how medications work and when they don't, of strategies for using pacing techniques, which is really important, knowing limitations, planning activities and dealing with flare-ups and the appropriate use of all of these therapies in concert. So essentially a pain management program is a 
dose-dependent cognitive behavioral therapy, which is suitable for many patients with persistent pain. The evidence is about the same as medication, so it's not a cure-all, it's not appropriate for everyone, and it's not suitable for everyone, or at least everyone, depending on their progress through their pain journey. It may not be suitable for a patient in the early part of their pain, and it may be too late to apply when it becomes very chronic. So the suitability of a pain management program should be dictated in a multidisciplinary fashion, such as that which is provided by a specialist pain medicine physician in a multidisciplinary setting. And that's essentially what a pain management program is. And what kind of healthcare practitioners are involved in delivering a pain management program? Well, for the biological side, explaining medications, etc., that would be provided by a specialist pain medicine physician. A physiotherapist will take on the physical aspects of it, but it would be ideal for that physiotherapist to be familiar with all of the psychological aspects of pain so that the delivery can be done in a suitable way. Physiotherapy is largely hands-off. There's no manipulation, no massage, dry needling, etc. The psychology is delivered by a clinical psychology with specific interest and experience in the management of pain. And they should have some knowledge of the pharmacology of drugs that are used, of the medical aspects, and of the physiotherapy. So you can see that there's a transdisciplinary approach. Occupational therapy, similarly, knowing what the limitations of what the patient can achieve, goal setting, and these little goals need to be achievable and measurable and useful. So it's a wide variety of people involved, a psychologist, physiotherapist, occupational therapist, and a specialist pain medicine physician would be the ideal individuals. You might bring in relaxation therapists, music therapists, etc., involved as well. And from a case management perspective, what advice would you give to a case manager and injury management advisor in terms of an appropriate time or occasion on which the pain, a pain management program would be um, of benefit? A pain management program is generally of benefit in tandem with other therapies, but it needs to be timed appropriately for the patient. The patient must not think that they are being placed in a pain management program because all other therapies have failed. It needs to be part of the overall thrust of therapy. So it can be used in addition to medication, in addition to neuromodulation, in addition to one-to-one -to -one mirror box therapy or graded motor imagery or some other therapy, injection therapy perhaps because it is not a three-week program, even though we talk about it being a three-week program, it's a rest of your life program with a primer of over three weeks of intense work and follow-ups with uh, a revision of those techniques in six weeks, six months, 12 months, etc. So these techniques, just as a medication has to be revised, the, the techniques of a pain management program need to be revised and revisited. And finally, can patients do more than a PMP? Of course, of course. The, the pain management program would be considered the start of their progress. They can develop and they can come back and talk to those who have provided or moderated the sessions. So that starting from a very low base, they can be encouraged to increase their activity, increase their productivity, increase their function. Perhaps their sleep improves or their walking tolerances increases, or their ability to take on a task. And this will, of course, give them confidence. So you know, some of the techniques might not no longer be required, and more techniques developed as progress is made. So a pain management program is a dynamic ongoing with intensive primers and revisions, and one that goes for the remainder of the patient's pain journey. Okay. Well, thank you, Dr. McCoy, for sharing your insight around pain management programs and how they're used, when they're used, and the teams involved in, in implementing those. 
We're next going to move on to looking at the subject of moving the pain and the important role that the physiotherapist can have in the pain management process and the rehabilitation process. Hope you'll join us again. Thank you so much. Thank you.